profitable drop shipping store. So this training is for anyone who doesn't know what to sell or is looking to sell products online but doesn't know where to source them. If you already have a Shopify store or if you know what you want to sell already, this will still be useful to you. So just a quick heads up before we begin, if you want to follow along or you're ready to start a store now, you can always click the banner on this page or check your email for the link and start your store for free for 14 days. Again, click the link on the right hand side or the email and link in your email because there's a ton of free resources that will be provided to you if you sign up through this specific link. Um, it's all automated, so you have to sign up through this one link to get all the good stuff. You'll get access to our private Facebook group. You'll get a bunch of free bonus resources and, and in ebooks, which I'll talk about more later when I get to that part on signing up for your Shopify store. Um, but for now, just, just want to let you know ahead of time, if you're going to sign up for Shopify, either do it through the link on the right-hand side of the screen or through the link you'll receive in an email from us, okay? So the goal of this training is to get you from an idea or product to an online store to your first sale. So whether you have no idea of what you want to sell or you know exactly what you'll be selling, this training will walk you through everything from finding suppliers to adding products to getting your, your first sale, okay? Um, and this is all without worrying about inventory or shipping thanks to drop shipping, which we'll talk about what that is and how that works in a few moments. So here's the agenda for today's training. First, we're going to start off with what is drop shipping. Then we're going to go through creating an, a store together. Then we're going to talk about what to sell and, and how to find suppliers. Then we're going to talk briefly about how to succeed. And lastly, we're going to talk about getting your first sale. As for myself, my name is Corey Ferreira. I'm a content creator here at Shopify, and I've been with Shopify for over two years. So you might have seen some of my blog posts or other webinars on the Shopify blog. However, and more rele relevant to you, before Shopify, I was an entrepreneur. And I've been an entrepreneur essentially my whole life. It all started many years ago. I remember being fresh out of school and earning an amazing salary at a civil engineering company. But I was still not satisfied due to the lack of autonomy and lack of fulfillment that I actually had. And I remember one day on a regular morning commute in Toronto to my to my job, I was actually listening to the four hour work week audiobook by Tim Ferriss to book about entrepreneurship. And I was so inspired by the idea of starting my own business that I actually got off the highway, turned my car around, went home, called my boss, and quit my lucrative engineering job on the spot. And from there, my very first business was a window washing business. It only lasted a year. It was my first real failure, but I learned a lot about myself and business. And my, my journey continued after that first failure. I continued to struggle and fail, but it got the ball rolling for me. And since then, I started, sold, and learned from many different ventures. And eventually, I found Shopify, and I joined the content team. And this is where I, could, I was able to share my experience of being an entrepreneur to other entrepreneurs like yourselves. So a few years ago, when I got started in the, in the world of e-commerce, dropshipping, which I'll be describing in detail soon, was a very attractive business model to me. It had a very low barrier of entry, which made it low risk, and it allowed me to start fast, but it also allowed me to focus on the things that I enjoyed the most about business, which was marketing and customer service. So I started my own store, and over the past year, my store has done really well. Now, here's my dashboard for my store. So I'm showing you this not to brag, not to create some kind of expectation or anything like that. It's just to provide you with some confidence in me. So this is me showing you that I'm credible and that I'm actually doing what I'm teaching. And everything I'm going to be teaching in this training comes from my own personal experience as an entrepreneur and as a store owner who's doing the exact thing, same thing I'm going to be teaching in this training. And as a side note, I'm not the only one having success with this. There are a lot of members in our private Facebook group sharing their success, sharing their story, and you'll learn more on how you can access this group at the end of the training as well. Okay, so let's start this training by going in logical order. Let's answer the question you, you some of you might be having, and that is, what is dropshipping? So here's an easy to follow visual that sums up dropshipping in a nutshell. First, the customer places an order on our store and pays us, let's say, 80 bucks. And next, instead of shipping the product out to your customer, we're going to forward this order to our supplier and pay them a wholesale cost. And let's say in this case, it's $50. 
So the supplier then ships the order directly to our customer for us. And instead of carrying inventory or buying products in bulk from the supplier, the supplier ships the orders directly to our customers for us. And here we've made $30 profit without ever even touching the product. And the best thing is that this entire process is, is invisible to our customers. So they won't know that it's been shipped from our supplier and they'll think it's been shipped from us. So where do you find suppliers that will actually do this for you? Well, one place is Overload Supply. And Overload Supply is what I will use and will be talking about in this training. So Overload Supply is a vetted marketplace of suppliers for retailers. And as of today, many of the, the sellers are located in China, offer wholesale prices, and will ship orders directly to your customers using fast and economical shipping options. It's as simple as selling $15 phone cases on your store, and whenever you receive an order, you purchase the phone case on Overload Supply for let's say $3, and then have the supplier ship the product out to your customer directly for you. We'll talk more on all this later in the training, including how to find great products on Overload Supply, how to find reliable sellers, how to easily import hundreds of products into your store, um, and easily manage these orders within Shopify as well. So why drop shipping over the traditional buy in bulk and hold inventory business model? Well, you can start immediately. It doesn't require any upfront investment because you're not buying the inventory in bulk. You can start it and run it technically from, technically from every, everywhere, anywhere, because you're not tied down to the physical location of your inventory. And if you fail, you can always try a new idea immediately or quickly since it's very low investment. So why is this important? Well, of course, dropshipping is going to save you a lot more time and money. So ultimately, this matters because it's going to, sh it's going to do that. And the reason is because you're spending less time managing inventory and shipping orders, and you're saving money up front since you're not, since you're not buying any inventory in bulk. This is also isn't just theoretical either. Like I said, I'm a real store owner, but there are also other people with real businesses following this exact business model I'm going to teach in this training. You can read more about each of these stories over at overload.com slash success. Okay, so here's our to-do list for this training. We're gonna go through each step in a lot of detail. So first we're gonna quickly launch a basic store. Then we're gonna quickly find products to sell. And then we're going to focus 100% on getting sales. So first we need to quickly launch our store. So let's walk through setting up our store on Shopify for drop shipping. So first we need to sign up for a Shopify store. So again, I'm going to recommend you click on the banner on this page it should be on the right hand side or check your email for a link to access this uh, 14 day free trial page. And you'll want to sign up here because again, you're going to get the free bonuses. So in case you're, you want to sign up later, you might want to bookmark this page. And when we're ready to sign up, we'll be asked for our email address. So we'll want to be sure we enter our best email address here. We'll also be asked to choose a store name, but don't worry if you don't have a, the perfect store name right now, you can always change it la later. So don't let it hold you back from signing up. And once we sign up for our free trial, we'll also be asked to enter an address so we can get paid. Once we're done that, once we sign up for our 14 day trial, uh, we'll be logged to Shopify. And here is where we can manage and track orders, add products, install apps, add pages to our store and more. So to see your store, click the icon on the left of your screen near your online store. And this will take you to your store. So of course my store is very bare bones at this moment. I haven't added any products, I haven't added any copy, I haven't even selected a theme yet. So let's do that. Let's actually select a theme first for our store to give it a much more professional look. Um, we can also customize it later within the theme editor in Shopify. So first we're gonna click on online store and under online store, you will see themes. So on the themes page, click explore free themes. And here we can see all the free themes on Shopify. You can choose to visit the theme store as well to see all the themes, including the paid ones. Um, but I'm just gonna look at the free ones because I wanna install a free theme. So for now I'm gonna choose and install supply. It's one of the free themes offered by Shopify. I think it's great looking. I think it's, it's a very flexible theme to edit. Great for stores with a, lot, with a lot of products. So be sure to click actions once you, uh, once you in install the theme. Be sure to click actions beside the new theme and select publish to make it your store's theme if it doesn't publish automatically after installing your new theme. So let's take a look at our newly published theme. Click view your store near the top of the page. 
And this is much better than the default theme, right? So again, still very much bare bones. Once we add a few products, further customize our theme and add some copy, it will look more like a store I'd want to shop at. So let's head back to Shopify and set up payment gateways up. So we're gonna set up payment gateways so that our customers can pay us either through credit card or PayPal on our online store. So first you'll want to click settings and then under settings, click payments. And again, here we can set up Shopify payments. We can change payment providers and we can add payment providers. So I'm going to recommend that you use Shopify payments as a primary payment gateway for your store. This will allow you to accept credit cards such as Visa and MasterCard on your store. Alternatively, you can use PayPal or both Shopify payments and PayPal on your store to accept orders from customers. If Shopify payments is not accepted in your region or you want to use another payment gateway to accept credit card payments, you can click change provider and select from a list of popular payment gateways to integrate with your Shopify store. I'm going to use Shopify payments. So first I'd like to set up Shopify payments, click complete account setup to get started. You'll then be asked to enter your business details. If you're not sure, or you don't have a business registered yet, I recommend setting up as an individual. And then you'll also be asked to attach banking information so that Shopify can pay you. Just follow the steps, fill out the forms, and you'll be ready to accept credit cards on your store in no time. Okay, so let's head back to Shopify and now let's set up shipping. So first you'll want to click settings and then under settings you'll want to click shipping. And here is where we can set the shipping options we want to provide customers as well as how much we'll be charging for shipping at checkout on our store. So in this case, I actually recommend making shipping free on our store if you plan on doing overload drop shipping. So shipping from overload suppliers is often very inexpensive or sometimes even free. So there's no sense in charging your customers for shipping. Just factor it into the cost of the product when you're buying from overload supply. So for example, if a phone case that we want to sell on overload supply is $3 plus $2 shipping, we'll consider the cost of the phone case to be $5 instead of three. And then when a customer buys on our store, they'll pay the retail price we set. So let's say it's $15 and then get free shipping. So really we made a profit of $10 since the phone case was $3 plus $2 shipping from overload supply. This will also help with increased conversions on our store. Free shipping is an excellent value add and value proposition for your store. You can put it on the top of every single product page. You can put it on the home page, right? Free shipping to anywhere in the world is a very strong value proposition. So I highly recommend doing that. To set free shipping on all orders in your store, you'll want to first delete the default shipping zone Shopify has set up for you and leave the rest of world shipping zone, okay? So for my store, I would click edit beside my domestic shipping zone of Canada. And from here, I'd scroll down to the bottom and click delete. Again, I only want and need the rest of world shipping zone since I want to make shipping free for any country, including my domestic country, Canada. So now let's edit the rest of the world shipping zone and make shipping free to any country. So first click the X beside the default shipping rate that Shopify set up for you. This will delete that shipping rate and then we're gonna create our own. Now click add rate under price-based rates. Give your new shipping rate a name, check off free shipping rate and click done. So once you're done, click save and we now have free shipping for all of our items to anywhere in the world in our store. So not only is it much easier now to calculate our profit and price products on our store, we might now even see more conversions and more purchases since we can now advertise free shipping across our store. So next, I'm gonna recommend adding a domain to your store. Without a domain, your store's URL will be something like coreyshop.myshopify.com instead of simply coreyshop.com. So to add a domain, click online store and then click domains. Domains with Shopify are $14 USD a year and a great deal when you consider domain privacy is it going to be included for free. So again, I recommend considering it, especially after committing to what you want to sell. So we just quickly launched a basic store. We chose a theme. We set up a payment gateway so we can get paid. We set up free shipping on our store and we also chose a domain for our store. So now it's time to find products to sell, find suppliers and then import products into our store and we'll be importing and selling these products from Overload Supply. Like I said earlier, Overload Supply is a great place to find inexpensive products to sell on your store. The barrier of entry is very low, which allows you to focus on marketing and getting sales very early on, instead of worrying about inventory and shipping orders. 
So here's the steps we'll be following. First, we'll download and install the Oberlo app in our Shopify store. Then we're going, to, we're going to look through the categories and products within Oberlo Supply. And then we're going to add the products we want to sell into our store. I also think it's very important to note that before we actually go ahead and start importing products to sell on our store, that we have a very clear niche we want to serve in mind. Or at least we started thinking about that while we're looking through products on Oberlo Supply. It's very tempting to import everything. However, I think the more specific the product offering and target audience, the better. Now, there's different schools of thought around this. Some people have had success with a more general store, um, testing different products on their store until they find a winner. Others have started a niche store and then tested products within that. I've had success with a niche, so I'm going to recommend that. So what's an example of a niche or a target audience? Well, Overall Supply has suppliers and offers products that can serve hundreds, if not more niches. Again, the more specific, the better. So here's some examples. Dog bow ties for dog lovers. iPhone cases for iPhone owners. Camping gear for campers. Exercise equipment for fitness enthusiasts. Music themed jewelry for our music lovers. So these are just random examples. I'm not saying these are the products you should sell or even the niches you should target. I'm just trying to suggest choosing a target audience and then finding products on Oberlo Supply that serves that niche, all right? When we're looking at products to sell from Oberlo Supply, there's one more thing to keep in mind. Only add and sell products from Oberlo Supply that offer e-packet shipping. So e-packet shipping is an economical and fast shipping option from China to countries like the US, UK, Canada, Australia, and a dozen other countries. So instead of waiting months for a package to arrive from China, your customers might only have to wait two weeks or so uh, for only a few bucks for shipping. So other shipping options such as China Post are much less reliable, more expensive, and much slower. So with ePacket, you get a tracking number allowing you and your customer to monitor deliveries, as well as a much more reliable shipping option. All right, so let's add our first product from Oberlo Supply together. To do this, we're gonna need Oberlo. So let's head back into our Shopify store and within our Shopify store, we're going to find apps on the left hand side. And within the apps page, we're going to find visit Shopify app store on the top right. Again, Oberlo is going to allow us access to Oberlo supply and allows us to easily add products from Oberlo supply into our store. Also, Oberlo automates our orders for us. So once we have orders to fulfill, it's just one click to purchase all the orders from suppliers. And then from there, orders are automatically filled once suppliers ship orders to our customers. Within the Shopify app store, search Oberlo. And once you find Oberlo, we're gonna click get to install it. And once you install Oberlo, you'll be taken to Oberlo's dashboard. Within here, you'll be shown your next steps to completing setup. Let's begin by looking through the Oberlo supply catalog and browse products we might want to sell. So head on over to the link in the left menu and select Oberlo supply. So here is Oberlo Supply. Again, this is a vetted collection of suppliers from around the world that is always growing. We can browse products by going through categories or simply by searching for the products that we want. I'm gonna search iPhone case. So here I can browse and click each product to gain more information, such as the variations offered, the shipping, the shipping prices, the description, the photos, and more. So I'm gonna click the camouflage pattern iPhone case to get more information. And here I see variations and, and more photos of the product. We can see that the cost is anywhere from $2.59 to $3.39, depending on the variation I sell. And the cost of shipping to the United States is $1.50. So this means I can expect to pay around $5 or less to get one of these shipped out to my customer. So I'm going to click Add to Import List, add it to my list of products within Oberlo to edit, such as the name and description before actually publishing it on my Shopify store to sell. So let's see how that looks. So now that I've imported this product, I'm gonna go back into the Oberlo dashboard and on the left menu, I'm gonna find import list to see all the products that I've imported. So since I've only imported one, which is the, the, the camouflage phone case, I'll only see that, okay? So here I can change the product title and description, I can set a price, I can choose which images to import from the supplier and a few other things. So to start, I'm going to give my product a much nicer product title and then add it to a collection. Within the next tab, I'll be able to change the description. Now the descriptions imported from Oberlo won't be optimized or very good. So 
be sure to use the information imported to write a much better and natural sounding product description. On the next tab, we'll find variants and we'll be able to select which variants we actually want to import or just import all of them, as well as set the price for each variant. So don't forget to factor in the cost of shipping when pricing your products. A good rule of thumb is at least 50% margin. Oberlo recommends a 200% margin on most products. Lastly, I'm able to select or deselect the images I actually want to import into my products page. So when you're ready, click the big green push to shop button and then navigate back into Shopify, find the products page, and you should see your newly published product within a minute if you don't see it immediately. So here we can choose to further edit the product and product page and choose which channels to show this product on. So we can make again further changes if we want and then hit save when we're done. But I just want to see how my product looks. So I'm going to click on view and then we can see here's my iPhone 6 case for sale on my store. Pretty cool, right? So it's already ready for sale. There's only a few clicks, a few editing copy, descriptions, titles, things like that. Not a lot of work and we can continue doing this and import dozens if not more products. So now that we've set up our store, we've imported our first product from Oval Supply, let's get to our first sale. Now before talking about marketing and sales, I think it's important to talk about goal setting. And setting a goal for yourself, specifically a revenue goal, is a really good idea. That's why I like SMART goals. It's, it's the idea that you should set goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So I'm going to give you an example of this. So $10,000 in sales within 60 days. That's my goal, right? So here's an example of that. So now that we have this SMART goal, this very specific, realistic, and time bound goal, we can begin reverse engineering it, right? So what does it take for me to get $10,000 worth of sales in 60 days? Well, if I'm selling a product that's $45, that's 222 orders of that one product, right? Or more simply, if I'm going to do it in 60 days, that's four orders per day since it's 222 orders total, right? Within 60 days. If your conversion rate on your store is, let's say, 2%, so 2% of everyone that visits your store buys, then you only need 200 visitors per day to achieve that. So now that we reversed engineered our goal, we can start to think, okay, so what can I do now to get 200 visitors per day? So here's the not to do list. These are things that won't help you get 200 visitors per day. So perfecting your website won't get you 200 visitors per day. Optimizing your store won't get you 200 visitors per day. Spending days thinking up a logo or branding won't get you 200 visitors per day. So here's what will. Focusing on easy to try marketing channels that provide immediate results. Okay. Playing with free and working with paid methods of getting traffic. So the free methods, you, you can play with them, take your time with them. The paid ones are the ones you're probably going to focus on. So if you, if you want, especially if you want immediate results. And then you only want to focus on one marketing channel at a time. I wouldn't recommend spreading yourself out too thin. You want to actually focus on one thing at a time and trying to master that craft. And then you want to learn a lot. So if you spend a hundred dollars on Facebook ads, consider that you're a hundred dollar tuition. That's how you're going to learn Facebook ads. That's how you're going to learn marketing. So let's talk about some practical things now that you should be doing to get your first sale. So here are the steps I would consider following when trying to get my first sale. So for, for our brand new store, we first need to determine our value proposition of the, of my business and the products I'm selling, which I'll get to in a second. And then we also need to determine our product market fit, which is a fancy way of saying our target customer as well as decide where most of our customers will come from. So we need to figure out why people should buy from us, who our, who our customer is, and where are they. So first is the value proposition and, or what makes our product so special, why people should buy from us, and, and then we're going to talk about how to create this. So a value proposition essentially answers the questions, why should customers buy from you? And why should customers buy your product? So there's several ways we can do this. Um, here's a few of the more common ways of, uh, I might think about incorporating into my business or product when I'm writing copy, creating an ad, or, or trying to position a product. Again, these aren't all the possible value propositions, and a lot of these overlap. This is just, just to help you think about this when you're starting out um, and trying to position your product and, and your business. Okay, So I'm not going to go through each, each of these. Instead, I'm going to say you should focus on the ones I've underlined and, and boldened. So 
with overload supply drop shipping, we're going to focus on these because we can't offer a better price. So we're not going to focus on that. We also don't have a monopoly or patent on our product since these are probably not very unique products because they're going to be offered by a supplier who, where anyone else can sell them, right? So instead, these will be our competitive advantages and how we're going to position our products and what we'll use when we're writing copy on an ad or in our product descriptions. So things focusing on things like the quality of the product, the features or the benefits of the product, how the product makes our customers feel, maybe it makes them feel more confident, uh, maybe it feels them, makes them feel more relieved, um, maybe it makes them feel happy. Uh, also, does the product maybe provide a solution? Maybe it makes their life easier in the kitchen or as a gardener or whatever. Uh, service, we can offer things like a free returns policy. Convenience, maybe we have amazing customer service. And then unique novelty, maybe the product is really cool or, or unique or creative. So let's see this in action. So here's Movement, Movement Watches, and this is a product page for one of their watches. So Movement is not drop shipping, but I, I still think there's a lot that applies to us and a lot that we can learn here. So let's think about how Movement answers the question, why should I buy this watch? So here I pointed out each of the value props this product page makes. Some of them are subtle, some of them are, are not, but I want you to start looking at stores that you like shopping at and kind of borrowing some of the elements that are convincing you to buy from them and use that on your store, right? Because clearly this, is, this works for them and it's making them money, so we should borrow some of the, the best elements of this product page and use it on our store. So we can see that um, the, the watch is providing us a feeling, right? We don't have to write that down we can just show it so we show might show it with action photos on on instagram people wearing it on on a beach and things like that um service so we see that movement offers free returns worldwide that's a great service quality movement's going to be promising a 24 month warranty on all their wa watches so that, that makes me feel like their watches are high quality you can also see how the customers even describe the quality of the watch in the reviews itself and then features, the watch can easily be sw swapped out for other different watch strap styles and colors and things like that. And then lastly, convenience, movement's gonna offer free shipping to anywhere in the world, it's pretty convenient. I don't have to worry about paying for shipping or anything like that. So, and it's located right there on the product page. So now that we know how our product or business is different, we now have to need to figure out who our customers are. And once we know who exactly our customer is, we'll have an easier time finding them. So the more specific we can get here, the faster we'll gain traction in our business. So let's answer who is your product for by thinking about and answering a few specific questions. So what specific niche or market are you serving? And then you wanna think about what are their interests? Where do they congregate? Then you wanna think about what's their gender, what's their age, what's their location, their marital status, etc. So let's take a, a, again, look at a real product from a real store and see if we can answer these questions to figure out who the customer is. So let's use Kylie Jenner's line of cosmetics as an example for our product market fit or figuring out who our customer is. Now, as a disclaimer, I don't actually know who her target audience is, and I know that she's not dropshipping. Okay? But again, this is still going to help us learn. So I'm going to use I'm gonna use this as an example anyway, even though they're not dropshipping, and even though I don't know who their target customer is. But I'm going to begin to guess. So specific niche and market, I'm going to guess makeup and cosmetics. For interest, I'm going to guess that they're interested in Kylie Jenner. I'm going to guess that they're interested in specific women's magazine brands, maybe competing makeup brands fashion, style, reality TV. Where do they congregate? Well, I'm gonna guess the customers of this product probably use Snapchat, they probably use Instagram. And then the demographic of this of the of the customer of this product, I'm gonna say they're young women and, and they live in the US. So the more specific I can be here, the earlier I might find success in sales. Even though older women outside the US might use this product or even want it, if I start narrow, I can slowly scale my offering to more customers as my store gains traction. So don't be afraid to be really specific early on with your target audience and then slowly scale it up to other different kinds of customers as you start to figure out who your customer is and actually what's actually working for you in terms of products that you're selling. So now that we know how to position our product and how, and, and now that we know that we're going to be tar who, are, who we're gonna be targeting with our product, we now need to figure out where to show this offer and how to find these customers. So we know who our customer is now, right? If we're, if we're Kylie Jenner's 
uh, cosmetics, we know who they are. If we're movement watches, we know what our value prop is. But now we need to figure out, okay, where do we go to find these customers? So here's a list of the common ways stores drive traffic. And again, these aren't all the ways and places, but it's a really good start. I think it's going to provide you a lot of good ideas. If you focus on just one of these and make it work, it's often enough. You don't have to do all of these as well. So the first is paid advertising, things like Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, Pinterest ads, YouTube ads. Then we think of things like influencers. So uh, influencers on Instagram or on YouTube or have they have their own blog and then reaching out to them, maybe providing them a free product or even just paying them to promote your product to their audience or maybe posting a picture on their Instagram to their audience or whatever. Affiliate marketing. So going to a website like share a sale or some kind of affiliate network or even just having your own affiliate platform like a refer a friend platform where customers or affiliates can promote your products to other people for you and then they earn a commission for every sale they bring in then we have content marketing so it's things like creating your own blog creating your own youtube channel creating your own podcast building up an audience and then monetizing that audience with products right so if i were selling uh, cosmetics i might create a makeup tutorial youtube channel right and then monetize that with my own makeup products and then lastly communities so things like reddit facebook groups and forums i might go to a community like a facebook group or a forum reach out to the leader or the person that owns this community and maybe work out a deal with them maybe send them free samples to their community or something like that or run a contest or advertise on their platform or something like that so here are a few guys I recommend starting with as well if you want to dive deeper into some of these concepts I just mentioned. So we have 50 ways to make your first sale. Uh, it's bit.ly slash 50 ways dash two dash sell. We have the beginner's guide to Facebook advertising. That's bit.ly slash guide number two FB ads. Then we have the beginner's guide to Instagram ads. That's bit.ly slash guide number two Instagram ads. And don't worry if you miss these links. You'll be able to see them again when we send you the replay of this training. So after doing all this and focusing 100% on getting our first sale, we get our first sale, right? What now? Well, you'll want to first head into Overlow and, and order this product. So it's as simple as clicking the order product button within Overlow, which will then purchase the product from the supplier. As soon as the supplier ships the order, the order is automatically synced within Shopify and your, your customer is actually sent a tracking number. So you don't have to do anything after you purchase the product. And the great thing about Overlow Supply is that you have... If you have, let's say you have 50 orders to process, you can process all 50 of them in one click. So it's really convenient, really simple. So it's just as simple as clicking order product. Again, you'll be asked to enter your pay, your payment information if you haven't done it already to pay for your the cost of the orders. Also, before we, we wrap up, here are a few of the most common mistakes I see, I see store owners encounter uh, when starting out with overload supply drop shipping. The first is a failure to focus on the things that actually bring traffic and sales. Again, they're doing things like maybe working on a logo or, or whatever, but they're not actually working on bringing traffic to their store. Uh, second is expecting customers to just stumble across their online store. So they're not actually doing anything to drive traffic. They just expect to just have people stumble across it by accident after just setting up a store. The next is investing in long-term marketing and expecting quick results. So doing things like SEO, content marketing, and then after like a day or two, not, not getting any traffic, you, you get frustrated, but really you have to wait a long time to be patient with those kinds of, of free methods. And then lastly, setting margins too low. So they might not set their margins high enough, which won't leave them enough room for marketing or, or buying ads and things like that. So while we have been crossing out items on our to-do list, we never actually cross out the last one, focusing 100% on getting sales. So your job from now on is focusing 100% on getting sales after you launch and import products into your store. If you want to learn more about dropshipping or would like to have a step-by-step -step write up of all this, you can check out my blog post over on, on the Shopify blog at bit.ly slash dropshipping dash Shopify. And again, the guide is written in case you prefer to learn through text and video, and it allows you to go through all this material at your own pace. So now that we've gone over the essentials before launching and the fundamental things you need to know to get your first sale, now it's time to take action. So I'm gonna go through the commonly asked questions, but first let's talk about how to take action, how to get the most out of this training. So 
Click the banner on this page or check your email and start your store for free for 14 days. And during this trial, you can apply everything you learned today, set up your store, launch, and then work to get your first sale. Once you sign up for a trial, you will receive for free a detailed case study from a member in our Facebook dropshipping group on how they made almost $200 within their 14 day trial without spending a single dollar on marketing and advertising. This ebook has no filler content. It's just 33 pages of product validation, marketing tactics, and setup tips. He walks you through how he found a niche to how he validated his products to how he almost made $200 before his trial even ended without spending a dollar on marketing again. So everything is a step-by-step -step and easy to follow process. It's a really smart approach to getting traffic to your store. And I think it would benefit anyone here while watching this or anyone interested in starting a store using dropshipping and overload. You'll also receive additional resources when you sign up for the free trial at this link. You'll get the dropshipping business launch checklist, which will provide you a check by check guide to launching your store, as well as 12 simple best practices to put in place before launching. You'll also receive my dropshipping business frequently asked questions list, which I provide answers to. You'll receive our dropshipping store design best practices guide to learn more about how to make your store look great without being a designer, without overcomplicating the store's look. And then finally, when you sign up by clicking on the link on the right hand side or the link in your email, you'll receive access to our private dropshipping Facebook group to have other entrepreneurs support you on your journey. So the link again on the right hand side of the screen or the link in the email, I emphasize this because people often miss it and they just sign up on just a random page and then they don't, they don't receive these items automatically. So if you sign up again to do this, this specific link that's on the right hand side of your screen or in the email, you can always bookmark it later if you don't want to sign up right now. Um, you'll receive this stuff automatically. That's why it's so important. If you already have a store, you can also email me at Corey at webinars.shopify.com with a link to your store and I'll send you this pack of resources. So before we wrap up this training, I wanted to answer a few commonly asked questions about dropshipping user using Oberlo. So the first is, how do I handle returns? So there are two scenarios for returns. If the customer receives their item and it's damaged, missing, or it's incorrect, you would simply contact your supplier, have them refund you, and then you would refund the customer. Very straightforward. Now, if the customer receives the item and they simply don't like it, you can have them return it to you for a refund if you have a refund policy in place. So your, your customer can return it to, uh, to yourself, to your personal address, to a PO box, to a virtual office, whatever you want. And then what you what do you do when you receive the item? You can keep it, you can give it away to a friend, an influencer, you can take product photos, whatever you want. And again, this is, this is your discretion. Some people don't have a, a refund policy in place or don't have a returns policy. I personally don't agree with that. For my store, I, I, if a customer's not happy, I just ask, ask them to return it to me and then I refund them. But it's, it's your discretion. Um, I personally recommend it. I think it's a, it's a good uh, value prop as well. And it's good customer service. What about quality and seeing the product beforehand? So it's never a bad idea to actually place a test order to see the product beforehand before you sell it. Um, now, however, I, I really recommend this or maybe recommend it more if it's a very complicated product. If it's like an electronic product, or something like that, then of course you want to order it, make sure it actually functions the way it's, it claims to function. If it's a very simple product, like a phone case, it doesn't really, I don't think it's that important. You can still do it, but I don't think it's as important. Next question is, do I need to register my business? So you should always register a business that's making money. I highly recommend first trying this though, and first starting a store and first just trying to even get a, a sale before committing to any kind of business or looking to setting up your business legally. How do taxes work? So this all depends on your local laws. You want to make sure you do your own due diligence, like even a Google search in the beginning for your country's tax laws, or better yet, talk to an accountant or a lawyer. Um, once you know how this all works for yourself, or if you know you want to charge taxes, Shopify allows you to charge taxes in your store. So if it's something you think is necessary, it's certainly possible within Shopify. If a customer places an order for different products from different suppliers, won't they receive separate packages from different suppliers? Yes, but as long as you communicate this in a shipping confirmation email, customers likely won't care. So I personally have never had a customer complain to me that they received their product in separate packages. I purchase things online all the time and have received them in separate packages. It's not really a big deal. 
why would customers wait X amount of weeks for their order to arrive? So first you want to ensure you're, you're using e-packet shipping like I mentioned earlier. It's going to be a quick, affordable and tracking or trackable shipping option from China to countries such as the US, Canada, Australia, UK and more. Second, as long as you communicate the shipping times to your customer ahead of time you, and you deliver what you promise, most customers won't care. The customers that do care are not your customers, right? The ones that want it immediately or next day are not going to be your customers. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Again, as long as you're delivering on what you promise, that's much more important. Okay, so that's it for today. We talked a lot about dropshipping today. We went through everything from setting up our store to importing our products to getting our first sale. There will be a replay made available again in your email, so look out for that. Again, click the link on the right-hand side of your screen to sign up for a 14-day free trial or wait for the link in your email, and you'll also get all these free resources I mentioned earlier. Now, I want you all to go out there, take action. Thanks so much for your time, and good luck, everyone. Bye.